Welcome. In this lesson, we will be introducing the most basic concepts behind concurrency, as well as further exploring how we can combine our requests. Before we begin, I would like to mention a few disclaimers. Just like in our initial videos, this is only one way of many to code this request. This is just one example to help showcase multiple eClient connections. I would also mention that this is not the most efficient nor effective method of making these requests. There are several points that could be better handled. Also, this code requires only the IB API and then the Python standard library modules to use, such as threading, time, and date time. You are welcome and encouraged to use and implement any packages available at your disposal. I would also like to briefly discuss what concurrency is. Concurrency means that more than one calculation or operation is taking place simultaneously. It is important to note that these tasks are not necessarily dependent on one another, which is precisely what allows them to be completed in parallel. The true potential of concurrency goes far beyond what is represented in this video. Please keep this in mind as we proceed. Now to begin, I'm going to first start by explaining briefly what my plan of this code is. The intention of this code is to make a market scanner in which I can then request market data from, compare those values, and then at the end of the market calculations, I can then place an order for the highest percent change percentage as well as the highest percent change value. And we'll touch more on what exactly that means later on. To represent this, I'm going to briefly show you what my code looks like after I've run it. So that way we can then kind of uh, reverse engineer it and talk our way through it throughout the code. Uh, to begin, I first run my code and connect to my socket. Um, I can then, I then run my market data scanner and I receive my top 50 results that come from that market data scanner. With that said, in my market scanner, I'm also requesting live market data so that way I could see the bid ask last value for whichever rank these contracts might be in. Now, after receiving all of this market data, I'm then going to calculate the top five contracts, comparing them against this morning's opening, though I will also be just showing what they would be calculated against uh, yesterday's open or the prior trade days open. With that said, if I look here, I could see my contract as well as my current price. Uh, this will match up with the last price from above. Um, then I can see the bar from today as well as my bar from yesterday. In my case, yesterday was November 14th. We can once again see my open, high, low, and close for those two dates. Now I made a quick calculation to compare my last value against my um, open values for both today and yesterday. And I even in this case calculated the change value like I referenced before, as well as the change percent. So that way I can calculate how much they're shifting by like an actual dollar uh, amount versus the actual percentage value they have changed on their own. This is increasingly or increasingly important for certain contracts that require a change of, you know, it might only be a 60 cent change, but that's 123% difference, whereas a $3 change is 120% difference on a different contract. So what my uh, supposed strategy in this case is going to be is that I will look for whatever has the largest increase in my top percent gainers uh, as an increase by integer, as well as that which has the highest increase by percentage. And so I calculated among those top five what has the highest of each, and then uh, set the value accordingly. Uh, in my case, it's gonna be FDMT and Huya. Now I could see my two values here and then I offered myself the option, would I like to buy these? In my case, I would like to buy both of them. So I simply hit yes. And so my 
system did is it would place a quick order and it placed the order for Huya and it placed the order for FDMT. Now, as we can see here, these are pretty standard orders. I just placed them as a uh, default market order and I bought them for a quantity of 100 with a GTC for time and force. So that way I could place these trades uh, at any time. That's all my code here was meant to do. Nothing additional, it was just supposed to execute my trades based on this sort of baseline strategy that I built here. Now in my code structure, I have three main uh, sections, I'll call them. In the first section, I have my typical test app class. This will include all of my uh, IB API components like eClient and eWrapper. I'm also creating my start investing class. Um, it's not necessarily essential to have a class for this. This is more of an organization structure that I prefer, just so that way I can keep all of my um, methods and functions regarding my own personal requests and how I want them structured and formatted to be all contained within the single class. And then finally, I have my main method, which calls out to primarily my start investing class and its methods. Now, starting out, I'm going to briefly cover just uh, generally what we'll be working with here today. To begin, I'm going to be building a market data scanner. I'm going to then print that market scanner. Uh, after printing all of that data, I will then have my build historical data, calculate the change value, and then uh, printing the difference. It's going to calculate the change, print the difference in the top percentage, as well as calculate my best buy options. I'm going to be touching on each of these quite briefly just because we've covered these in other lessons and I would advise reviewing those prior lessons to gain a more general understanding of these uh, methods we're going to be working with. But this will at least kind of showcase how we can integrate them all together and what you can actually do once you start putting these methods of eCline and eWrapper into one piece. With all that said, a lot of what I'm working with today will be based around my global dictionary called Global Dict. And what this will do is it will allow me to pass and move all of my symbols as needed um, between all of my methods and objects. For those who are newer to coding, it helps to somewhat think of this like a each entry into my global dictionary is sort of like a new row in a Excel document. We're going to be separating them by the contract, ordering them by the rank, or sometimes referred to as my request ID in this. I'll also be including things like the bid value, ask value, and you can think of it generally like a table or Excel sheet in that regard going forward uh, if you're looking for a bit of a visual model there. So jumping right into the code, I'm just going to be initially starting out by placing a build scanner request. And this is almost identical to the one we had in our prior video where I'm requesting the top US stocks and I'm requesting them using the top percent gain as my scan code. And so after making my initial scan code request, it then returns the values back to me in my scanner data object request. And we could find that in here where I can then, like I said, um, start matching them by where I can then start matching them into my global dictionary. You'll see here I'm using my key object as my rank. Uh, so in that case, I always know that value zero, which is the first in the index, will always line up with my first contract. And so it also helps in this case because it's an integer. I can use that rank as my request ID to always set, let's say, zero. My first contract, it will also denote that anything with rank or request ID of zero will be referring to my first return values. So that's just an, ob an idea to help keep things consistent. With that said, I'm going to be building out my market scanner a little bit more here by adding on bid, ask, last, and so on. And this will actually add on all of these values for all of my market scanners. At the market scanner end, in addition to just canceling my market scanner, I'm also then going to be using some concurrency so that way I can uh, actively request market data for all of my 50 
scanner symbols at the same time so that way I don't have to wait for them to re uh, make the request return and then continue to do that uh, serialize it to make it slower this way I can just send all of those requests instantly um, and save a little bit of time after getting all of my market scanner details back uh, both the symbols as well as the values um, I can then see the tick price where I will receive these market scanner values and assign them accordingly. It's worth noting here that I'm using the enumerate function so that way I can receive both the the index or the key value as well as the actual value or uh, what is in the request from before we can get things like bid, ask, last, and so on. Um, this is particularly relevant because I'm actually going to be comparing the tick type enum which we had referenced in our market data video and that way I can compare the two and so that way if I ever see bid for example return from my enumerate function here I can compare that against my bid in my uh, dictionary here and then assign it without worrying about assigning to the wrong field because bid would always match up to bid ask to ask last to last and so on and luckily because things like today yesterday today change percent and so on are not part of any uh, tick type, generic tick type, that would never override. And so we don't have to worry about that either. Similarly, I'm going to be making these market data requests as well uh, for, for my top five symbols here. I'm not gonna be going into too much depth on this because it's just market data request and it's gonna be using the same uh, process for assigning these values. Going back down to my main method, uh, at this point, we're going to be going on to the uh, fourth step here for calculating the change percentages. Um, the calc change is simply going to be a method so that way I can clean things up and then put all of my uh, calculations in a single method so that way I don't have to bounce around so much. This can also make that request for all of my top five so that way I don't need to uh, constantly be recalling my calc change this will just be a single call clean up all of my data um, and then let me move on to the next of my methods which in this case is going to be print top diff this is just going to be printing out those top differences um, and that's how we're going to see this sort of formatting we had here where we could print out the symbol current price and then the bar data for today yesterday's bar data and then the change values, both the change uh, integer value as well as the change percentage value. Um, and that will also apply to both today and yesterday. After getting those values, I am actually going to be using this uh, change from today and change from yesterday value as sort of my uh, metrics for calculating the best options for what to buy. We could see here that I'm just iterating through all of my percentages and integer changes or difference values and uh, setting the largest as the best value or the best percentage um, and then reporting on them at the end. Once I do, I use a simple uh, loop so that way I can, after I finish going through all of my values, I end with a simple input asking if I'd like to buy those um, two symbols. Um, and if I put in a yes, then it immediately sends me over to my buy best method. Now my buy best method is just a very simple place order method. Um, it's just designed to place a market order using GTC as the time in force. So that way I could place my order essentially anytime I'd like. And then that way I also have a quantity of 100 sets. So that way I could just have a standard value to always enter a position with. After running that, I include my threads for stopping my application. That way I can run all of this code and then beyond myself having to enter whether or not I'd like to buy the contract, it is entirely automatic. And if I wanted to not show that off in this particular case, I could just simply remove that yes or no prompt and instead put in a call for rec account summary to check against my equity to see if it's worth buying those values or if I do not have the funds. With all that said, that should cover everything for this 
quick little introduction here. This concludes our video on combining requests and our introduction to concurrency in the TWS API. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to having you join us for more TWS Python API lessons. Thank you.